In this video, I'm going to give you some solid advice on what to look for when buying a new violin. Buying a violin, or your beginner violin in particular, can be really difficult because there's so many different violins that you can choose from, there's so many different brands, and they all seem to look the same. They all seem to have the same descriptions on the website or whatever from the retailers, but they have a huge variety of price. So what do you pay? $39 or $3,900? I'm Joel Kennedy, and today I'm going to break some rules. I'm going to provide you with some information that, quite honestly, a lot of violin shops probably don't want me to tell you. I'm going to give you some insights into buying violins in the violin world that you're not going to find anywhere else. So stick around. So I think one of the most difficult aspects of finding good information on YouTube about what to look for when buying a violin is the fact that most videos are created by companies trying to sell you a violin, or they're created by musicians who have been compensated by the companies to sell you a violin, or they're by musicians who are trying to provide good information, um, but they are providing you information from a limited perspective, meaning that they have probably never professionally set up an instrument. They certainly not built one. So they may not know exactly, you know, why does an instrument, you know, sound good or not? Why does an instrument, you know, have great playability or not? Why do they feel good or not? Why do they look wonderful or maybe look a little odd? So I offer you a unique perspective. So I am a shop owner. Um, I've set up personally tens of thousands of violins with these hands uh, and I've built my own instruments, but I'm also a player and a teacher and a parent and a consumer. And I'm not here, I'm not trying to sell you violins. I'll be the first to tell you that uh, you do not have to buy a violin from Kennedy Violins in order to get a good student quality violin. There are other companies out there, they are in the minority for sure, but there are other companies out there that you can buy a good quality student violin from. And, um, you know, it's really important because, you know, it's going to make your learning process a, a lot more fun and uh, a lot, lot easier as well. So today I'm just going to give you some clear criteria that you can use to be able to parse out the differences between the instruments to make it really easy to say, this whole group of instruments I don't want to buy. These other ones, maybe I do. Let's look at the characteristics and then you can make a really informed decision. So today I'm only talking about violins in a price range of $300 or less. So chances are, statistically speaking, if this is your first violin, you're probably not gonna wanna spend more than $300. You're not gonna wanna budget more than $300. So that's the target that I'm, I'm hitting today. And yes, you can buy a decent quality student violin for less than $300. So in terms of violins that are $300 and less, I would divide these up into two simple categories. Number one is the category of violins that are $100 and less. Simply put, I would not buy them at all. Now, there's always exceptions to the rule. You may be able to find a decent violin that's not gonna be horrifically frustrating to learn on and impossible to play. It's possible, but it kinda might be like the Loch Ness Monster, the Abominable Snowman, Bigfoot. Hey, maybe they exist, maybe somebody saw them, but I certainly haven't. So I wouldn't personally recommend any violin less than $100 because the probability is extremely high that they are gonna be um, a decision that you will regret. So here are the reasons why I do not recommend violins for less than $100. The woods generally are not woods that are for violins. So woods that are for violins are generally grown for violins. They're uh, cut a certain way for violins, they're stored a certain way for violins, they're dried a certain way for violins. And when, when these criteria are not met, you get a violin that, you know, is probably going to fall apart, it's probably going to sound terrible, and it's probably made with green wood, which means that the wood hasn't been dried properly. So the, wood, the violin might look like a violin when you get it, but in a very short period of time, the violin, you know, the wood will shrink, basically. It'll just, you know, you know, and then the violin, if it was even playable before, is certainly not playable now. 
Speaking of wood, the ebony is another thing you want to look out for. So the ebony, this black wood on the violin, right? You want to make sure that the pegs and the fingerboard and the chin rest are made of ebony. Why? Because, eb because these parts are a wear, they're wear items, right? So your, your chin is constantly on this chin rest. Your fingers go down thousands and thousands of times on this fingerboard. These pegs are constantly turned and they have a, with a lot of force, you know, back and forth and, you know, in and out on the instrument. You want it to be ebony. You want it to be really durable wood. Now, if it's not uh, made out of ebony, it's probably made out of like jujube wood or some pear wood or pine, but they dye it. So they'll dye it black. These dyes are probably not very good for you. They'll probably get all over your hands and everything else. But besides that, the dye wears off. It looks really ugly. The woods will wear out. They'll break. They'll crack. So that is a, a big difference between this segment of violins and the more expensive ones. The strings are another one. You want to get decent quality strings. The uh, violins in this category, again, uh, rarely, if ever, have name brand strings on them. What do I mean by name brand strings? You want, you want your strings to be from a company that specializes in making strings. That means that they spent millions and millions of dollars on R&D to develop strings that are durable, they stay in tune, they sound good, they vibrate properly. Um, you know, there's, there's, if, you, if you get a string that just looks like a string, chances are it's gonna be nearly impossible to sound even halfway decent on the strings. They'll probably break. Um, they'll probably go out of tune constantly. Um, so just stay away from it. You want to um, make sure you have name brand strings. There's a lot of strings out there that are, that are good. You can take a pretty awful sounding violin and put a good set of strings on it and it'll literally make the violin sound twice as good. The finish is another one. The really cheap violins, less than $100, almost always, well, yeah, always as far as I know, always have a finish on it that's really thick and glossy. It's some kind of furniture finish. You know, they spray it on, they dip the violins. I don't know what they do, um, but it's not um, finish that's meant for violins. If it's a pretty color, it's pink or blue or black or something like that, that means it's furniture finish. You do not want that on an acoustical device like a violin because the wood has to vibrate. It can't vibrate when it's got that stuff on there. Another really big one is setup. You want a violin that is set up. You do not want to receive a violin that's in pieces. And for the most part, as far as I know, most, if not all violins that cost less than dollars, you're gonna to have to put them together. You're gonna to have to put the bridge up. You're gonna to have to put the strings on. You're gonna to have to figure out how to rosin the, the, the bow. Maybe you'll have to put the fine tuners on. I mean, unless you're some kind of savant, if you're just a parent <laughs> or you're an adult beginner, you know, you probably don't wanna spend a bunch of hours trying to put a violin together only to have it put together probably wrong. There's no set of instructions that are good enough that's gonna enable you to do a really great job. So insist that your violin is set up and set up properly. Okay, so the second group of violins is $100 to $300. Now there's no guarantee at all that um, these violins will not have a lot of the neg negative characteristics that I just mentioned in the sub $100 category. As a general rule, the more money you spend, you increase the probability that you're not gonna have those features and you're gonna have you know, all the good features that I'm about ready to mention, okay? Okay, so number one, and this is probably the biggest one, the prob it's probably the biggest differentiator, is setup. You want to make sure that the setup is done in the United States, okay? For a couple of reasons. Number one, you want to make sure that, you know, it's done right, it's done professionally. Also, there's the uh, variable of time. So when a violin is set up, the time between when it's initially set up, meaning the strings are put on, the bridge is set up, the, the, the violin is tuned, all that stuff, the time from when that occurs and when you receive the instrument should be as short as possible. The reason is, is because strings stretch, right? And the wood changes, right? It breathes, you know, as the humidity changes, as the temperature changes, the violin changes. So you wanna receive your instrument as soon as you can 
you know, from the point at which the luthiers set the instrument up. So if the violin was set up, let's say a month or two months or more between, you know, when it was set up and when you received it, that means that the strings could have stretched in, uh, quite a lot, which means that bridge is gonna move forward and move forward and move forward. And then the bridge could start buckling and start warping. It could start changing its shape. The strings will get all loose on the pegs. So now the strings, you know, the pegs won't stay put. The violin will constantly go out of tune you know, just a myriad of problems. So you want, if it's set up in the United States, well, then you've just greatly increased the chances that, um, that you know, since it's being shipped to you domestically, that, that, uh, that time has been uh, shortened to some extent. Okay, so the other one, again, is decent strings, right? I already talked about this before, but if you're in the $100 to $300 price point, there's a higher probability that the strings are decent quality strings from a name brand company. Okay, next on the list is a warranty. You wanna make sure you have a decent warranty on your instrument. Here's the big reason why you want, you, know, you want a lot more than 30 days or a couple weeks or six months or whatever, because all the things that will, will go wrong with your instrument if it's not made out of the right materials, if it doesn't have name brand strings, all of these things that I talked about before, all of these things will happen after 30 days. Most of these things will happen at the four month mark or fifth month mark or whatever. You know, so you, you, you gotta have a warranty on an instrument so when things do go bad, you can return it and get your money back or you can exchange it or at least be able to talk to somebody on the phone to remedy the issue. Okay, so the next item is customer service. Now, I don't know, maybe this doesn't seem important to some people. Maybe it seems really important to you because you don't know a lot about violins. I don't know, but I'm telling you, Customer service is very important because, you know, people, a lot of people don't realize that violins, you know, any stringed instrument, you know, they move, you know, they're, they're not the same. They're not a toaster. They're not a pencil. They are different on the first day th than the year later because it's, a, it's a made out of a living organism that was chopped down, right? So, you know, it changes. It changes depending on the temperature. It changes depending on the humidity. It changes depending on the strings and the string tension and how long it's been played and how long it's been sitting in a closet and, and where it's been sitting and where it's been spending its life and how often it's been played. It changes. So you want to have customer service. You want to be able to, you know, if you have a question about something, if something is change on the instrument, you know, pick up the phone and just be able to talk to a knowledgeable person that can answer the questions that you have. Besides, maybe the order's not perfect. You know, maybe you broke a string, maybe it was your fault, <laughs> but maybe you broke a string, you know, when you first got your violin. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to pick up the phone and talk to somebody? What if you didn't get an accessory that you were supposed to get with it? Or what if, you know, there's a lot of what ifs. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with your order or with the instrument down the road. So you want to make sure that you have customer service for your violin so you can always pick up the phone and talk to an expert. So guys, I hope that this video helped today. I hope I answered a few questions. Hey, if you have some more questions, you know, put them down below in the, uh, the video. I'm all over social media, DM me, message me, whatever. I answer pretty much all the questions that I get. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, smash that guy. I'll take some time. Okay, yeah, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the alert bell so you get a notification because I'm creating a lot of new videos these days. And don't forget, here at Kennedy Violins, you know, we are players and teachers, we are professionals. And, um, you know, we're always happy to answer any kind of questions you guys have anytime. Have a nice day, guys.